Well, I'd like to say a big thank, uh, welcome to everyone. <laughs> welcome to Sweet Pea Headquarters. And I'm Alison, and today I have my beautiful assistant, <laughs> Ripley Martin. <laughs> assistant or model, I'm not sure which. <laughs> you know, on game shows, yes, and they have the little the assistant model type thing. That's Martin That's today. So, uh, sewing guru on every other day of the week. Um, this morning, we want to talk to you in particular about our Sweet Pea machine embroidery. Rulers. rulers and today we thought we'd explain to you how to use them we've, we've done this like a few times yeah. but as we have new people joining all the time we feel like it's important to tell you about that so which what will we start with um i invented the rulers so i'm actually an inventor well the, and they are a really really great product to use they speed something they speed the process up of doing your in the hoop work but they also create accuracy that's right. Which is what we want. So and, we've got seven. Yeah, and we use them here all the time, so it's not a gimmick or anything. And actually, when I first started Sweet Pea and was doing all the designing and testing and everything myself, yeah. to make things a uh, lot more streamlined, I would cut out a whole pile of batting, the different, different sizes for the different hoops yep. that I was using. For example, if you were doing a quilt, what's this one here? So maybe this one. This one is for a five by five to just design. And this actual line on here, if James can pick that up, the actual line on here is five by five inches. And the point of the machine embroidery rules is if you have a look at the beginning of all our instructions, we have there the batting to cut out, the fabric to cut out, everything. And when you're making something in a five by five hoop, we always tell you to cut your batting to seven inches by seven inches. And I got sick of using a large ruler to to do that. And yes, because it's long and it's fiddly and it gets caught. This is so yeah. simple. So Martin could probably tell show you how we use it just to cut out a plain piece of fabric or batting. Yeah. So he's actually got some. So what we want to do is we want to say say we've got our stabilizer in our hoop already and it's in position. And so we put our first piece of bat piece of batting down. Sometimes we have a placement line, sometimes we don't. So here is my, this is a five by seven hoop. And so my um my batting. piece of batting will be that's, seven by nine. That's right. And we have the ruler here, which you can see that Martin's used that to yep. cut that piece of batting out. Yep. So that, <clears throat> that's that's the size. It's just one of those time savers that you can just go to your batting and cut out a, a whole lot and have it prepared for whatever you're making. So I'm going to just put one of the the grips on it. So this is a, a, a grip. So that holds. Under there maybe so yep. that everyone can see. And so therefore I can now, without any effort, And I get an accurate. Yep. And also, if the batting piece doesn't have to cover the whole design, like we've got hooped up there, and it's only going to be, you know, by a certain number of inches, you can just slide your ruler up. Because we've got the markings on the we side. We have inches on two sides, yep. and then we have centimetres on two sides. So you can yep. use it like a normal ruler yes. as well for smaller pieces. And then for larger pieces... We always take out our quilt cool essentials <coughs> ruler. Excuse me. Sorry, the sneezes. <laughs> the sneezes. Which is 24 inches long and six and a half inches wide. And we use that to cut out, well, I, I used it to cut out this piece of fabric here, actually, that we'll be using later. And then for anything smaller, we always use one of our smaller rulers, which so, is good because they fit on one of these rotary cutting mats. So some, I'm a bit mean sometimes when it comes to means. I mean stingy or, or I like to actually save stuff. So sometimes if I know my batting is going to sit outside my stitching, I actually just peel a little bit more off it in there because yep, I yep. don't want to waste the extra. Yep, they're but versatile, we, but because the dotted line is on there, that is, that's exactly where yeah. your 5 by 7 well, tack down stitch will exactly. be. You know if you move that across, across that's there. where your stitching line will yes. be. Absolutely. So, so it's quite safe to use. The other thing I like about this is that um, it, this one gives you an inch margin around the whole area. So it gives you a position that you can actually, with your 
um, you can actually hold it into position while this is being tacked down like without that. getting too close to the yeah. foot, and you can use it. You use yeah. the pink thing, or, or don't want a needle through our fingers, no. do we? So we we allow an inch on the outside edge of it, so as you've got enough grip to hold on to it. Yeah, because you don't want your fingers wandering underneath the needle. So also, Martin, we didn't say anything about the actual sizes that are available so, in the sets. So we have four by four, five by five, six by six, eight by eight. Yep. And then, um, the rectangle then we have ones. rectangle ones are uh, five by seven, six by ten, and seven by twelve. That's right, and that's your hoop size, not the ruler size. So for uh, our what we say is our ruler for the seven by twelve is nine times fourteen inches. Yeah, so that it adds you the extra margin of one inch one. around the outside edge. So that, it adds it already. Yeah. Now we've chosen those sizes because they're the stand, standard embroidery format sizes. Now not every brand has those size no, hoops, right. but they are close. And you yeah. can adapt yours to to How your you, hoop size. Yes, yeah. you, I mean, so if you were using a genoeing machine, you'd know that you would actually cut this out, but you'd leave an inch off because of the, the so hoop's not that smaller? long. Yeah, yeah. No, it's smaller. Yeah. Well, it's smaller. Well, shorter. Um, so it's it's just about managing what the hoops you have yeah. there for your for your machine. It's not about cutting cutting the stabilizer. It's for batting and fabric. That's it's right. not for stabilizer. Not particularly. They're not exactly the right size no. for your stabilizer. But as you just said, you can once you know maybe this would do for your stabilizer, but you would have to check your hoop size. Put the ruler over the top of your hoop and make sure make that, sure that you've would got be your sufficient. Margin. So yes. you can still use them you for that. You can still use them for that. But the thing is, is that it's, <laughs> you wouldn't be you wouldn't be cutting your stabilizer out with the the ruler that matches your hoop size because no. it wouldn't work. That's so. right. And we didn't actually say uh, the gripper comes free with every set. Okay. Uh, so if you purchase a set, and if you just want to buy some individual rulers, just in the sizes that you use, the, you know, mostly, you can actually you purchase, purchase a gripper. gripper. They're not very expensive. And you just go like that, cut around, and you go like that. Yeah, it's absolutely the, fantastic. I mean, I say is that they are great. The reason that one of the reasons we we started off, we had I think we had a handle originally, didn't we? We do, and the but, Australian rulers do actually have a handle, but uh, we had trouble that they were making post. them too large to ship, and it was costing you more yeah. for your shipping. Too so. hard to ship, too fragile to yeah. ship. Yeah, so when they're all stacked together you near know, with a gripper, much yep. much easier. To use them just on a tinny board, you can use them on a you can use them on a, on your normal cutting board. That's right. The reason I like this is it's just because it's easy to turn around. So many brands of these on the market, and yeah. they're square or they're circular. Yeah. They just make it even easier. Well, Martin, you've got one of these at home, so you're used to using I'm that. Used to using so Martin uses yeah. that. The girls normally use. And here I board use this. Yes, exactly. One, two, if you need one of Do you want to have a look about fussy cutting? Yes. So there's a little there's a little four by four. We'll show it on here, James, if you want to have a look at that. Martin can get set Sorry. up over here with whatever he's using. So we've explained to you the measurements around the side in imperial and metric, and then we've explained to you that this line here is actually the hoop where they will do the tack down stitch. So that's four inches by four inches. So now we'll explain to you what the crosshair in the middle is for. So it's exactly the middle of the hoop. So you could use it for multiple reasons that you could come up with, but the main reason we use it is because um, we use it to fussy cut. Yeah. And Martin will show you here to explain what fussy cutting is. Well, fussy cutting is about um, managing a design on fabric, so as you can actually center it into your into your um, um design so if you had a block that had required a flower in the middle of it or it doesn't have to be a flower it could be an animal it could yeah. be anything and perfect example putting things into frames yeah that's um, a lot of people in, have in, been in, doing in for our bookshelves, yeah, bookshelves and, so we've got the crosshairs which match this design perfectly now you'll see that this particular piece of fabric is off grain but we need the flower so as it is actually totally square in the in the hoop, so I've got my lines through my design one way and my horizontal lines the other way. And then I can go ahead and then cut this out, so as I know that it's not going to be what there's, it's not going to shift. Um, we know that it's going to be in the right position for. Let's just go a little bit closer there. Never works perfectly on camera, does it? Of course, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. And a little corner there, like we get yeah. all the time. But there we know that this piece of design is right in the middle of our, 
uh, cut out fabric so we can position it in our yeah. work and, really, really And easily. I mean, let's face it, it's versatile, so if you wanted half the flower... Absolutely. ...you know that that's exactly where it will be stitched through. So you just you can just use that crosshair as, as a guide. Yes. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's just really, really handy to use, really handy to have. Um, I think that um, these rollers make... It's so much more simple to cut out good squares, and yeah. you've got you've got to promote accuracy. Yeah, it's yeah. There's nothing worse than actually stitching around the edge of something and finding that you're actually totally missing it. To tell you the truth, the difference between when you see someone bag or quilt that stitch and it just looks professional, yep. and then someone that doesn't look so much yep. professional, so so professional is ironing. Yes. And just neatness while you're sewing. Well, so if I was cutting that piece out, I would always iron yeah. it first and then cut it out. And then you have a completely square, yeah. flat piece of fabric. For me, when I'm doing projects, I like to cut everything. I have all my pieces of fabric cut, ready to go. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So for every project, I've already cut so I know where yeah. I am. And But we would recommend doing a test cut first. Oh, yes. Or like to do, <laughs> to do one block first to make yeah. sure that... You've got everything yep. right, um, and you know what you're doing before you cut. Don't cut out a whole quilt, please. But having then... having the stacks of these, <coughs> they are ready oh, these to go we into. have oh, ready. Yes, yes definitely. Yeah, I, it's just so handy. You can go to the drawer, grab out ten. Especially if you're pushed for space, and like you just say, this was your workspace, and now you're up to cutting fabric. Yep. You don't want to keep getting out your roll of batting or a big no, folded piece no, or something. So no. we just get our batting out, clear the table, just cut a whole lot that we need i mean even if you've cut this out and then you find out this is for a six by ten hoop so this would be eight by twelve if then in your design it says you need a piece of batting eight by six or whatever you could just still use this yes, and cut it in half, half and then we always end up using these then for other designs other, absolutely well I, we have a little uh, a scrap box which we delve into quite regularly yep. um, a couple of things again this is available these are, are available on um amazon and etsy and those sorts of places it's not something we stop what's it, what's it called martin is it a lazy susan no, cutting no, wood or a turn a, table it's a, it's a turn cutter it's a, it's a cutting match which which, which turns i mean yeah, so a, just google that and then you'll find someone who supplies them close to because it's it's um um I think it's called a rotating cutting mat. Okay, yeah. rotating cutting yeah. mat. That's and and thing, as far as we've got, we've got a stand for our rollers. And they are, they're available online as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's not something that a lot of people have to. different ideas. Yeah. And actually, they just they just all sit sit flat against mm. each other. If you just want to have them in a drawer or something. Yes, as I think well, anyway. I think it's so. I mean, so I have I I have, <laughs> I have sorry I have mine on the stand on the end of my my bench there, but I continually shifting them. Yeah. So I think I'll probably be able to put it yeah. in a drawer. Anyway, so we'll just mention again, if you buy the set of rulers, you get this grip book with them. And if you're purchasing individual rulers, you can actually purchase a grip book separately yep. on the website. Uh, is there anything else we need to say? Oh, only thing about the gripper is that you've got to make sure that the surface is clean. Yep, works um, Both better. surfaces are clean and you, 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 you open it up by having one of the handles down in the centre, close it up. And they're ready to go. That's right. I get very, very simple, easy on the hands. It's a. It actually has a, got a nice way of holding this, especially if you do have reluctant hands. That's right. Because, well, arthritis yes. or something is very yeah. helpful. It's, it's, it's got a nice firm grip on it, and you're not going to actually slip. Yeah. You don't want to be slipping when you're using your rock you cutter. That's real. Anyway, so that's uh, all the information we have for you today about the our machine embroidery rules. So I hope you enjoy using them. All right. Until next time, thank you for joining us. Bye now. Bye. Have a good day.